Content is a function of the business model, of the platform. Earned attention kings are crazy YouTubers or hot porn stars. And you want to fix that by redirecting the focus of attention to AI development. We would probably see an arms race to the top of human intelligence. You are watching the Chat God channel. Basically, you want to put the development of a chatbot or large language model like ChatGPT at the heart of Twitter. And that's not only going to make Twitter very valuable, but it's also going to fix the content creator or attention economy. Look, the problem with Twitter and really any other social media platform is the alignment of the user's collective attention and the platform's profit motive. This is a hard alignment problem and I actually think it is the AI alignment problem. You'd think the algorithm determines what shows up at the top of your attention feed, your media feed, your social feed, your whatever feed. But it is really the business model of the platform which determines the algorithm and therefore your feed. You are fed that which most likely will make money for the platform. Period. Right. In the attention economy, attention is king, which is why an attention distribution algorithm like the YouTube algo or the Twitter algo will recommend that which will keep people on the platform. It's really a move to maximize profit because the more time they spend on your platform, the more advertising you can show to them but also the less time they're spending on your competitor's platform. Correct, which is by the way why Mr. Beast is the attention king on YouTube. Not only has he perfectly understood the business model of the platform and therefore the algorithm, but he also adapted to it optimally. His videos are meant to capture the attention of the largest audience possible and keep it as long as possible. In a sales department, he would be the greatest salesperson because he has understood that he is measured on pipeline creation and conversion to revenue. That's really all it is on YouTube. The YouTube algo is a sales incentive algo, essentially. A business algo. You are paid for monetizing eyeballs. I know you're going to argue along the lines of, you know, that which attracts and captivates the largest possible audience, which is what you want to do in order to maximize advertising profit, is that which sort of triggers and, and resonates with the lowest common denominator of human motivation, the bottom of the human psyche, if you will. Yes, because quantity of attention trumps quality of attention. So you aim for the most basic instincts, urges, desires, dreams. If Maslow's motivational hierarchy were the blueprint of the human psyche, then YouTubers would become richer the more they were aiming for the bottom of human motivation and poorer the more they were aiming up for the peak of the motivational hierarchy. This is why current attention kings are crazy YouTubers or hot porn stars. This is the problem of letting the collective will determine attention kings. And you want to fix that by redirecting the focus of attention of platform users, like in the case of Twitter, to AI development. Absolutely. You see, any media platform has to turn a profit, however idealistic it is. But if you go for an advertising based model, you get YouTube or TikTok. Content is a function of the business model of the platform. Now, if instead you were to say that I want the users of my platform to develop the greatest AI and I want to reward them based on their contribution to this artificial intelligence, instead of rewarding them for their contribution to natural stupidity, we would probably see an arms race to the top of human intelligence. And we would essentially place a motivational premium on eternal self-overcoming of stupidity. You are watching the Chat God channel. Okay, so let me get this straight. Twitter's product would no longer be the attention of its users, which it can sell to advertisers, but some kind of large language model trained on the cognitive output of all Twitter users. That is right, but there are more potential revenue streams for a platform motivating intelligent behavior. Before we get there, tell me, how did this idea of an 
attention-based virtual currency occur to you. These attention coins or Geistmark, which you get in exchange for contributing to this AI development. Well, the main source of inspiration for the Geistmark was the current advertising-based business model. Now I was always asking myself what YouTube and Twitter really were. Eventually I realized that they had no product to sell. But you were saying that they were selling human attention to third parties. Yes, that's one way of putting it. But really, if you consider YouTube, then it is clear that there's no actual sale going on, just an exchange. You see, a content producer on YouTube is not selling their content to anyone, neither to their audience, nor to the advertiser directly. It is just sitting on a hard drive on some data center operated by Google, somewhere in the world, the so-called cloud. Okay, well, what was the insight that changed your understanding of YouTube then? Well, clearly, if YouTube is the mediator between the content producer and the advertiser, then YouTube is some kind of exchange. An attention exchange? Yes, I mean, if you look at the exchange between the content producer and the advertiser on, on the YouTube platform, it looks like the content producer, all he is doing is harnessing human attention and then exchanging it for money. The money coming from the advertiser who wants to influence the attention which the content producer has harnessed, you mean? Absolutely. YouTube is an attention exchange, an attention trading platform, really. Okay, do you think that makes it a sort of novel financial institution, kind of like the New York Stock Exchange? Yes, I do. But more importantly, I think the necessity to create an attention-based virtual currency whose value is a function of that which one consumes and that which one produces. Well, I think this is quite a groundbreaking realization. The mind mark. Yes, the Geist mark, as I call it. And your mind mark balance would be a function of the kind of media you consume and the kind of media which you produce. Yes, a result of your attention score and your feedback score, to put it more technically. But the feedback which you would provide wouldn't have to be written, would it? No, it could be your answers to a multiple choice test. That's also feedback and very valuable. You are watching the Chat God channel. Right, well, as for Twitter then, you mentioned that there were more potential revenue streams than just the AI, which intelligent media production and the, the proper direction of human attention could produce. So what are those revenue streams? Yes, of course, Twitter could compete with all existing social media platforms and media platforms, really. So you just need to look how its competitors are making money. Honestly, I think most of them make money from a mix of subscriptions and advertising. Not LinkedIn, however. LinkedIn also makes money from licensing its database to those who can benefit from that because they find value in it. You mean LinkedIn recruitment services? Yes, I mean recruiters pay a lot of money to be able to search the whole of LinkedIn in order to find the ideal candidate. Right, well, because people upload their CV and connect with people at their company and in their industry and so on. Yes, LinkedIn is the place where people publish their professional profile, but we know what's wrong with it, of course. Oh, definitely. It's a, it's a circus, a, a very politically correct circus where everybody pretends to be much more professional and much more intelligent and much more experienced than they really are. Naturally, it's a mask parade, yes. But imagine you could strip off the nice profile picture and the polished resume and see what's behind the illusion. I sense something very invasive is on your mind, David. Imagine a recruiter was able to sort people based on the quality of their attention and their feedback. And more than that, based on some kind of informational heat map to see what they attend to, for how long, and so on and so forth. That's actually a very interesting idea. I mean, most people nowadays can't even spend a minute without pulling out their phone. Imagine a business meeting where no one is paying attention to the boss because everybody is distracted. And then they are incapable of giving proper feedback on top of that. Exactly. Imagine how much companies would be willing to pay for a proper cognitive profile of potential employees. Yeah, but would that not invade the Twitter user's privacy? They could opt in and out, of course. But why would they opt out if by opting in, they could be discovered for greater career opportunities? 
Well, I, I, th I think you may be right. Some people would probably benefit from a database recruitment score as opposed to their image on LinkedIn. Yes, but more importantly, imagine how it would motivate people on Twitter to behave and how to spend their time upon opting into this recruitment score option. Well, they would try to allocate their attention very intelligently, I guess. Yes, but why? Because they would want to be offered higher paying jobs, which are also more in line with what they like to pay attention to. Exactly, Walter. And that's the motivational power of money. You are watching the Chat God channel. You are watching the Chat God channel.